Are you worried about plagiarism in your PhD thesis or in your research papers? Are you about to submit them and you'd like to completely avoid any issues even with unintentional plagiarism? Then in this video I'm going to show you exactly step by step what you need to do in order to completely eradicate plagiarism from your research paper or from your PhD thesis. Now plagiarism has always been a big topic of discussion and a big issue especially for students writing their thesis but now I think with chat GPT this has become an even more popular discussion topic because a lot of people are using these new AI tools to help them write research papers or thesis however some of you might not be aware of the fact that when you're submitting your thesis or when you're submitting a journal paper now the plagiarism detectors can actually detect that something might have been written by AI. So if you have been using AI tools to help yourself write the thesis or papers or if you've been even writing it without AI tools I want to show you the exact steps that you need to follow in order to completely eradicate plagiarism from your papers or from your thesis. So these steps won't require any additional software from you. These steps are actually pretty simple and you can implement them straight away today in order to eradicate plagiarism. And the good thing about these steps as well is that once you learn them, you'll be able to use them time and time again for any future papers that you're writing so that you never have to worry about plagiarism. Now, before we dive in, it might be worth just very quickly explaining what I mean here by plagiarism. And there are basically, you know, two types. And I think a lot of people think about the first type of plagiarism, which is intentional plagiarism. And that basically means that you took somebody else's work, their words or their ideas, and you just put them in your thesis or in your research papers knowingly. You knew that you were committing plagiarism, that you were copying other people's ideas, but you did it anyway. And I think this is much less frequent. I think the second type of plagiarism, the unintentional plagiarism, is what happens more often to more PhD students or researchers, especially now with the rise of AI tools. So basically unintentional plagiarism is that, you know, you didn't mean to do anything wrong. You used additional tools, you maybe used additional help such as ChatGPT to write your papers, but you did your very best to, you know, acknowledge any other people's ideas with references, you know, and you did not intentionally copy and paste anything from other people's papers, right? Yet, even if you did not intend to commit plagiarism, you might have actually done it if you haven't followed the steps that I'm going to explain to you now. So let's dive right in. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers regularly write, submit and publish research papers in top Scopus Index journals. And if you're interested in watching more of those videos, then definitely hit the like and the subscribe button here. So in this video, I want to go over how to paraphrase successfully so that you can avoid plagiarism. So one of the major things that you're going to be doing all the time, especially when reviewing the literature, is taking other people's words, other people's ideas and putting them into your own words and into your own ideas and structuring everything coherently in your paper or in your thesis. So it's really, really important that you understand how to paraphrase so that you don't plagiarize unintentionally and also so that you don't spend hours upon hours, you know, just trying to change words and, and put things into your own ideas, which sometimes can be a problem. So this is exactly what I want to show you in this video. So first of all, I want to go over some, you know, do's and don'ts. In other words, what you should do and what you shouldn't do in order to paraphrase effectively. So first of all, you know, you should definitely change the structure of the sentences, right? It's not just enough to, you know, to change a couple of words here and there. You've got to rewrite the text completely. And I'm going to show you right after these do's and don'ts, I'm going to show you an example of a poor paraphrase and of a really good paraphrase. So you will see those do's and don'ts in practice. But the first one is definitely change the structure of the sentences, move words around, change, change the sentences completely. You also want to reorganize the paragraph. If you're taking like an entire paragraph from a text, then you, you need to change it completely. You can't just kind of change a couple of words there, but keep the same structure of the paragraph. 
that's not going to fly. And really the best thing to do is to use your notes, right? So what you want to do is like when you're reading the literature, you want to be using, you know, our note taking worksheet that's available on the program in week three of PhD Accelerator, for example, take notes on the studies. And then just when you're writing, just look at the notes. Don't look at the text itself because that is more likely to cause plagiarism. And when you just look at your notes, you can't really plagiarize because you're just using your notes, right? So the notes are already a paraphrase of the text and you're kind of making a paraphrase of your notes, right? So that's a really, really important tip. Think how you want to phrase the ideas because often a problem is that like, you know, we just take a sentence from somebody else and like change a couple of words here and there, right? Change considerably for substantially, for example. But really, you know, you want to think what you want to emphasize in the text, you know? Do you want to emphasize the result? Do you want to emphasize the conclusion, the suggestion for future research? What, what is it that fits in your text? Because really just taking a sentence or a paragraph um, from another text is, is not really going to fit within your text. So you want to change the sentence so that it emphasizes whatever you want to say in your paragraph. And then once you've done it, then you want to go back and check against the original to ensure that there is no plagiarism, right? Just to be on the on the safe side. What you should not do is just change some words. What do I mean by that? Like, don't just, you know, change substantially for considerably, change nevertheless for however. That's not going to fly. You have to change the entire sentence and, you know, you don't change the idea, but you change how the idea was originally. Presents. You should also not keep the same structure of the sentence of the paragraph, right? I've already talked about that, but it's, it's really important. And also you should not look at the text while paraphrasing because that's more likely to lead to plagiarism, right? So what you want to do is use notes, as I've just explained, because if you're writing and looking at the text, it's, it's kind of difficult not to just change one or two words because you're constantly looking at the text and you're wondering yeah how do I substitute this particular word that's why it's so difficult for you to paraphrase on the other hand when you're looking at your notes you're just writing the sentences from the notes that you took previously so that's a much better idea we know what we should do and what we should not do but now I want to show you practical examples right so I'm going to show you an original text here that was taken from uh, one of my papers I think or my thesis and then a bad paraphrase of that text. But first of all, you know, look at the text. You can pause this video, have a minute to read this text, and then I'll show you the poor paraphrase. All right. So if you've read the original text, here is the paraphrase. Pause the video again and think what is wrong about this paraphrase. Why is this paraphrase poor? Pause the video and think about that for a second. So you've had some time to think what, what is bad about this paraphrase. First of all, you know, the structure of the paragraph is exactly the same as the original text. There is nothing different about the structure of the paragraph. Second of all, the structure of the sentences is exactly the same. You know, for example, the first sentence starts with the recruiters. The recruiters and in the study, in the research, you know, we're substantially more, we're significantly more. It's ex the structure of the sentence is exactly the same. Now, another thing that is bad about this paraphrase is that it just substitute some of the words, right? So we've got, you know, instead of this study, we've got in Kitschkovic's research, instead of significantly, we've got substantially, right? Um, instead of previously hired, we have, they had hired previously, but it's, you know, instead of however, we have nevertheless, but it's essentially exactly the same text. So if this is how you're paraphrasing right now, this is gonna be flagged as plagiarism. You cannot do something like this. What would be a good paraphrase of this original text? Take a look at this good paraphrase and think about what is good about it. And you can pause the video for a second. Notice that, you know, almost everything is changed about it. The structure of the paragraph is different. The structure of the sentences is different. It's even shorter than the other paragraph. It also emphasizes the ideas that the, the writer wants to emphasize because the paragraph is, is restructured. The sentences are restructured. You know, it emphasizes other parts of the text than the original text, you know, which is good because, you know, you're trying to fit the original text or idea within the flow of your paragraph or within the flow of your introduction, literature review, whatever it is that you're writing, right? So you want to make sure that you're emphasizing and structuring things in such a way that they that it fits within what you're trying to say, right? So that's a good example of a paraphrase. 
So that's it. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Now, if you want personalized help from me and my team to help you to write an excellent thesis or research papers as a PhD student or a researcher without any plagiarism and submit them to top journals in your field, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation and the link to do that is right below this video.